and now we go back to streaming. So, look, here we are, fights in tight spaces. Uh, when we start playing, I need to remember to check to see whether being in the top right here is a good idea or a bad idea. This is because this game was in early access, so I did not play it in early access, so that doesn't really matter so much to me. And now we are going to start. I'm going to do the tutorial. I downloaded the demo and did the, the tutorial, but let's do it again so that it's easier uh, to follow the action and see what's happening, how this game works. So it looks like you've got a couple of silhouette options. We're going to be this slightly more femme-looking agent with the cool uh, swoopy hair. Nice to see you back, Agent Eleven. This is definitely not James Bond with more punching. Report back to me when you've completed your training and you can start playing the video game. So here we've got uh, kind of the um, the no branching version of your Slay the Spire uh, progression tree. Yeah, art style A plus. Um, very good application of minimalism and silhouettes and like light and dark stuff. That was, it was a notification. The thing that I did on Streamlabs actually worked. Uh, thank you for following SJ Magner. Uh, welcome to the stream. I had done that stuff on Streamlabs a while back and I wasn't ever sure whether it was applying. I had to go back in and try to make it work. And now I know that it's working, so that makes me happy. So I'm going to go to options real quick. I'm going to turn down the audio a little bit. Because that the audio is loud enough to make uh, make it harder to talk. Yeah, this I had seen a little bit about the game SJ Magnar, and was like, okay, this looks looks pretty fun. I don't think that I had internalized at that time that it was a deck builder and that you're going to get a different hand of cards every turn, which constrained your options versus um, other ways of like doing a tactical game, like in. Um, um, in, uh, in Into the Breach by the people who did FTL, you have your like set of powers and things every turn, and so the constraints are applied differently in the game. Here, the constraints are more about the cards that you're given. So, Q and E, let us rotate um, so that it's easier to see exactly what's going on and who's doing what and coming where. This is our health bar, so we're at 40 of 40. This is a combo meter where you, that you build up by playing cards, and then some cards have this kind of combo symbol in them where you need a certain amount of combo. This is our energy. I think this is called momentum in this game. So this card costs zero momentum, but then this one costs two. This, okay, this is like some kind of uh, meta progression maybe, because we get this emergency move at the start of each fight because of the deck. Here's our objectives. Um, if we press alt, We'll see, here's the orders, here's the enemy, they're going to do an attack for 4 damage, one time, and they have 28 health, and then here's my 40. But this character only attacks one space in front of them. Oh yeah, hard time getting in, into the breach? Um, I, I've heard actually from a few different people that they recommend setting the game to easy when you start playing, and then getting comfortable then and then going back to medium. I definitely didn't do that, but I had a great love of mechs, and like, oh, I'm, I'm getting to play with these different mech squads, and that's very fun. And I played some other tactical games, uh, but I could definitely understand it being tricky to get into, because you have to very quickly learn to be able to read the board, um, and there's some other stuff that's like unpredictable. I'm sorry that, uh, that it was not easy to get into for you. So right now, this jab only has a range of one, and that's the arrows going both ways. So the enemy is two away, but a spinning back fist has a range of two. So use the mouse to highlight cards in your hand and press left click to select spinning back fist. And then it tells me where I can have to target it. So I could go here, 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 or here, because it has to be two spaces away. So I select on this enemy and they're gonna do like, Highlighting on them shows, like, kind of talks through what they're going to do. And then I'm going to do spinning back fist. You know, the, the fighter kind of takes a, a step forward, swings the back fist, and then resets back so that you can attack from two away and not get counterattacked. 
Some cards re require momentum to play. You can see this indicated in the top right of the card. If the card cannot be played, its momentum cost will be shown in red. So now I can't play the double jump kit because I only have one momentum left. But I can play a jab if they were only one spot away, and I can play focus. And now I'm back up to two momentum because it gave me one momentum. And now I can play the double jump kick, which costs two, and you can play it two spaces away. Pop, pop. Cool attack, and it moves me forward one. And now I can play my free jab, and the enemy is out. So uh, the attack, like she kind of steps forward, does a spinning back pick, like back, uh, back, uh, back fist, kind of gathers, uh, gathers attention, uh, steps in with a double kick, and then finishes him off with a jab. So that's the end turn. Quite complete. Click continue to get back to the map. Something this game does uh, once you get out of training is it will let you do kind of a cinematic replay of the fight, um, like it's a like a camera person. So I'm excited for that as a way of basically playing out the dance of the fight. Let's talk about your opponents. During a mission, you will come across a variety of enemies. You will sometimes be given warning when and where new enemies will arrive. Look for this marker. If the tile is blocked at the end of the turn, the enemy will be prevented from arriving until the next turn. So this is also something that happens in Into the Breach. You can see the emergence points, and if you put a if you put or push a mech or a like a kind of a, a character onto that space, then they won't be able to, to come up, and that's a really useful technique in that game. It's fun to be able to have this here as well. So, I guess, do I not get to play my cards? I don't have to end the turn, because they're going to put the characters down. That's fine. Press and hold the Alt button at any time to see the current health of all enemies on the board, as well as the hazards, void tiles, and railings. So, I guess I have to click. Okay. Uh, so my right Alt is not working. Uh, thanks for coming by! See you next time. So if I press left alt here, then we see the borders of the world. We see that this enemy is going to punch me here. That's where this punch is going. And this enemy has a gun, so they're going to shoot this way. So if I could push this enemy one space back, they would get shot by this other one. And moving the enemies around so that they're attacking each other seems like it's a big part of this game. Enemies will be activated if they are targeting a player at the beginning of their turn, or if any character enters their range during the turn. So this character is activated because I was here, and then if I push this enemy into there, this enemy will get activated because there's somebody in their line of attack. Enemies with projectile weapons can attack from any distance, provided there isn't an obstacle in the way. Use front kick on the selected enemy to push him into the ranged enemy's line of sight, like I said. So front kick costs one, you can use it from one or two away, and it deals six damage and one push to an enemy. Or you advance one space and then do six damage and push. So you can step forward and do that, but I don't need to. I'm going to do the kick, and it pushes them one back. So now I'm not going to get attacked by this, and this enemy is going to get shot. Once the enemy has been activated, they will attack at the end of their turn regardless of the allegiance of your target. The icon over the enemy indicates they're getting attacked this turn, so that, I guess, the circle of the punch is that they're going to get attacked. Pass the cursor over a target to see an individual enemy stats. So they're going to do 4 damage if they hit, but they only have 6 health left. This enemy is going to attack for 5. Looks like 5, uh... What's that 2 for? Range attack that does 5 damage. Do you do twice? Oh, two, that number is the order. So this enemy attacks first, and then that enemy. Okay, that's what that means. If you see the circle punch enemy uh, icon from the enemy's info panel, it means they are currently primed to attack on their turn. And now, even though I have momentum, they're telling me to end my turn. Because this is the enemy. So the enemy gets shot. Enemies can move during their turn. Depending on their attack range, they may move toward you if they're close range, or keep their distance from you if they have a ranged attack. Here we go. So, shooting from range, this enemy is punching me here. Enemies will try to stay away from tiles adjacent to a void to get out of the way of other enemies. Use jab on the indicated enemy. So this is a 
three attack at one range for th uh, three damage, but then you gain one momentum. So I use it for free, and then I go up to four momentum, which is great. Now I can use the front kick on this enemy, and they get pushed out of the world because they were against the edge. If I complete, click continue to go back to the map. So we are going over here. This looks like it is the advanced tactics, which is going to be maybe the last fight of the tutorial. Let's take a look at more advanced mechanics. Some cards have an alternate movement amount. Use the option play card to move close to the enemy. So option play, move, six move two tiles or deal six damage. So I can move here. You can use the environment to your uh, advantage. Cards like head smash, this one right here, can be used only when the target is adjacent to a wall or barrier. Notice that some cards like head smash will cause an enemy to face you, so they will attack you if they survive the attack. Look out for the icon on this card. So I think it's that, um, yeah, the kind of reset circular arrow. Target will turn to face attacker. And an X in yellow and combo will move all combo after using this ability. So combo lets you build up and use cer certain cards can only be played if you have higher combo. Um, these end combos, you'll want to build to them and then use them uh, knowing that you're going to end up without any other combo. So, now I can use Hide Smash. And because there was a railing, I got to smash them. Sometimes, you'll have to take a hit, play the block card. So it costs one momentum and adds ten block. So I've got ten block right here. Any damage done will be taken from your block before your health. And then we end the turn. So they punch me, my block goes away. Note that any leftover block is usually lost at the end of your turn. Continue. If the enemy is pushed out of the fight space, they are knocked out immediately. Enemies can pushed over, be pushed over railings, windows, open doors, or any way you, anywhere you see a hazard marker like this one. Note that void spaces won't always be marked with a hazard marker. Okay. Now we use push because they're next to a thing. Whee! And they get knocked out of the arena. And that's that. Now we get some more enemies for more tutorial. Every time you make a successful attack, your combo level will increase. Combo is maintained between turns, but any movement you do will reduce your combo level by one for each tile of movement. So I need to remember that because, you know, combo goes up and then you have end combo uh, attacks. But if you have to move around during your combo, you're going to lose a little bit of that, um, that of what you've gained. I would say the momentum you've gained, but momentum is the energy here, so I need to not use that term. You need to reposition in order to attack. Note that with very few exceptions, you can only move in a straight line on the board. Use step to get closer to the highlighted enemy, which is this one right over here. So I step, move, and you see that my combo has gone from one to zero. Some cards require a specific combo level before they can be played. For example, left spin kick, which requires two. Some cards increase your combo level without the need for an attack. Use jolt to increase your combo level. So cost zero and increases combo by two. So you do the cool action hero head, uh, head uh, neck crack and now you can use left spin kick. Note that besides pushing enemies through a void, you can hurt them by pushing them uh, against an obstacle. So there's a wall here, and I just so I do a left spin kick, and I knock you into the wall, and that, the four from the like, broken board, that was damaged from being knocked into an obstacle. If an enemy is primed to an attack, you can also choose to counter the incoming attack, allowing you to uh, retaliate during the enemy's turn. Play the counter card now. For one momentum, you gain eight block, and we've got this like reverse uh, two arrows going in a different direction, and that's, so that's counter. And if you counter, deal 10 damage to incoming attackers. So if someone attacks you, you activate the counter ability from something like this. So I do that, and now I end my turn. Do I keep that three combo? That three combo? I do, okay. So turn on turn, your combo uh, stays unless you do something to get rid of it. Some cards, like Grapple, require multiple steps. Click the card first. Move to any adjacent tile within the board 
No combo gain. Target will turn to face away. Move target to any adjacent tile. No combo gain. Um, so, I select the enemy. What's the... And then the destination. Okay. So, I select the enemy and then the destination. It doesn't, like, do a special beep or whatever when I select the enemy. I just have to be clear about it. As you progress through the game, you will come across cards and enemies with new abilities. If you need a reminder, you can cover over a card to see an explanation of what each icon means. You can enable and disable help tooltips in the options menu. First time you encounter a new mechanic, a help screen will pop up to explain it. You can enable and disable those help screens in the options menu. Now finish the fight using the information you have learned. Okay, so got deal 8 damage and push. Move into the vacated tile. The tile behind it on target must be empty, unless the attack will KO the target. The tile behind the target must be empty unless the attack will KO the target. Okay, so I can't knee them into the wall or whatever. So I think if I do eight damage, so I actually don't need to do that. So I'm gonna jab this enemy and then do rising knee on this enemy, which knocks them out, and I move one forward so I'm not getting attacked. And I can move to the other side of an adjacent enemy or move two tiles. Um, I think I'm just gonna move over here and we'll see what that does. Push, rising me. I wonder if uh, getting knocked over counts as will, um, will defeat the target. So I'm gonna push this enemy first and then I'm gonna do rising me. Oh, I guess I have to move here and then do rising me to see if that will get rid of you. Yeah, so I can play it because I knocked them off of the map. Cool, very fun. Impressive stuff. You've clearly still got it. The tutorial is done. Did you ever have any doubts? The world moves on, Agent 11. New challenges, new threats. I'm just glad you're up to it. Cool. So there's several different missions. We did the training, and now we can do the Death's Head Biker Gang. With a network of clandestine clubhouses throughout Northern Europe and thousands of members, the Death's Head Biker Gang have a built-in infrastructure for drug and weapons trafficking across borders and limited scruples when it comes to arming terrorists the world over. So, looks like five scenarios, and then as we go on, we have the ability to um, choose different starting decks, which is pretty fun. After the Biker Gang Wars of the 90s, we thought we'd seen the last of the Nordic gangs, but they're back with a network of so-called clubhouses across Scandinavia. We're seeing a massive increase in smuggling operations on northern European borders. Put a stop to it. This is Punchland Europe. So we did the briefing. We get to view our deck. So this is like the starter deck. Quick strike. Push, block, head smash, front kick. Quick block, long strike, dash, step, and slip. So our big our big enders are the head smash and the front kick at the moment. And then we've got a little bit of other stuff. But I think as we do fights, we will get to draft new cards, rogue uh, deck builder. I've heard uh, the, the genre recur referred to as rogue deck as the way to like combine rogue like deck builder together, which is I think is fun. Uh, it's maybe not the greatest name, but whatever. Rollbacks allow you to revert your actions back to the start of your current turn. Uh, so this kind of thing shows up in a lot of tactical games because it, it makes the game more forgiving. Void tiles are spinning spaces that fall outside the board. These tile spaces instantly kill anyone who moves onto them. Use them to your advantage, but be careful not to be pushed in the void yourself. Void tiles are shoved when you hold down the show button. Some cards give you the ability to counterattack, which we saw, and some enemies have the same ability. Look for this icon. Kind of arrows going left and right. A character with a counter ability will attack any incoming attacker within their normal attack range. Enemies will counter attacks both from you and other enemies, no matter whose turn the attack occurs on. Okay. So these enemies do not have counter, but both of them are primed to attack me. So I think what I want to do 
is see if I can slip here because then, well, let's see. If I could move one of them into the other, that would be great. What do I have? What are my options here? Counter, shift. I don't have a push. So, so this emergency move says remove on play for the duration of fight, remove at the end of turn for duration of fight. So this is like a, a, an exhaust card in Slay the Spire. I can use it this turn or it's gonna go away. Remove it end of turn for duration of fight, but it can be retained. Why? Um, I'm curious how those affect. I could also stay where I am and counter. So you're gonna do six and you're gonna do six, but that be eight block and then pet block. So let's try this other way of doing things. So we're gonna counter and block, and then we're going to do that long strike to you. And we're gonna go ahead and let both of these attacks come in, and then we've got the counter on them. So emergency move stays. So because I got attacked twice and I had that counter, had countered to attack each of them, and I didn't take any health damage. So this one has 4 health left, and this one has 10. And this enemy came in with 20 health. So if I have something, we'll do 4. So Quick Kick does 4 damage, and that takes you off the board. And if I can push you into you, you will get attacked. So I have Emergency Move, so I can move here, and then I can step here, and now I will push you into this other enemy. And then you get punched. Very nice. So this enemy's up on, on me. This one is in the area. We have Combo Finisher. Deal eight damage plus two damage per combo to an enemy up to two tiles away, so we have three combo. So that would be 14 damage. And we can advance to the enemy before attacking, and it removes all combo. But Hammer Fist deals extra damage when you have combo and does not remove that damage. So I could Hammer Fist you, and then dash, but Combo Finisher takes three uh, momentum. So why don't I do a front kick? Because you're going to take damage by getting knocked into the wall. That makes the six and did ten. And now I'm out. I don't have energy. And he doesn't attack because they weren't pointed at me. But now they are, and they have 10 health. So a trick strike does 8. And the long strike does 6 more, and that's that. So now we can do show replay. Watch a full replay of the fight by pressing the show replay button. So uh, tune in for this. And we've got like points and things that we got, but this is the fun part. So we all drop in coming over, and I pop, pop, block, counters, and another one comes in, so I take the one, slip around to the other, push one into the other so they get punched, and they come in on me, back this the last one, and then get ready, kick, punch, and another uh, kind of a, a cross to take out the last one. So I got 200 points for winning the level. 5% for this, difficulty, extra objectives, so there's extra objectives each fight, let's take a look at the extras next time, and it only took four turns to complete. Defeat enemies, so we get a card, and then we get extra money for completing the fight within six turns. So now we get to draft a card into our fight deck. So we can add more counter, which could be pretty fun. We can do shove, push target one tile to left or right of their current position, so push moves them back one. Shove moves them left or right, which could be pretty fun. And if the destination tile is occupied, deal damage. So I could shove somebody into the wall, which would be cool. Or a right spin kick. Deal six damage, push target to the right. Let's do shove, because I think the movement mechanics are really fun, and we can lean into that. So now we have an actual kind of flow. So it looks like the pub is the end of this mission. And then there's options along the way. I think Jim lets you like move, change your cards or upgrade or some. Medical gives you health back. And then any of these that are like um, show you a square is a fight, I believe. 
So I can go to the restroom or the garage, which will lead to medical or the gym. I'm going to go to the gym and try out the gain new abilities, up upgrade existing abilities, or remove cards. So let's go to the restroom. So it's smaller, um, smaller space, and we've got this one kind of obstacle here, and an enemy's going to come in. So injuries are undesirable cards that get added to your deck. If you're lucky, all they do is clutter your deck, but they can also give you a variety of negative status effects. Injury cards are temporary and removed at the end of the fight. I'm guessing some injury cards don't get removed at the end of the fight. So I've got... You're going to do six damage. And I've got counter, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do a quick strike. And then, let's see, do I do more damage if I, if I counter for 10 damage? I can't do the combo finisher. I'm just thinking, if I do a front kick and then move and counter, I'll get more out of that. Because I do damage to you, and you're no longer attacking me. Or are you? Do you have a range of two? Range is one to two, so I will still get to do that counter, I think. Let's find out whether counter can apply at range, or whether I can only counterattack one square away. I'm out of momentum, so now we're gonna learn. Okay, my counter did not apply, so this counter only attacks one space away. So now this enemy has four, I've got a shooter. You can attack me from where you are, but if I move right here, I'm gonna get shot. So if I move to here and I had shove, I might be able to move this enemy over and then they're going to get attacked by that, but I don't have shove, I just have push. So if I push this enemy to the wall, they would, um, they would be taken out. And you're going to do 10 damage. I don't have a block for that. And I don't have, yeah, so I only have, I have push. And then movement and block. So I guess let's go ahead and step here and then quick block, block, and push you, push you into the wall and you're out. We've got 16 block and you're going to do 10 damage and I'm not going to get attacked by the goon with a, uh, with a pipe. Blocking a bullet is very silly, but we have the abstraction in the game, so we will accept this silliness. Got a head smash. We should get rid of my combo. Hammer fist gives extra damage per combo, but if I play other things before the hammer fist, that combo will build and the hammer fist will do more damage. So let's think about that. So I could do six, and then that would do seven, which would be 13. So I can kick you in a push. So you're gonna take eight, and then. Do this long strike, and I've got six health left. Where I can do the hammer fist, and then I can do an emergency move. And if I do, if I go all the way over here. I'm not going to get attacked. So I think instead I'm going to emergency move to here because that gets me out of the way of this one, and then they're going to come in on me. Okay, so this one's going to try to hit me from the pipe from over there, and this one's going to punch me. Move to the other side of adjacent enemy. So I can go to here, I shift right by them, and then I can push them. So I can push and then front kick or hammer fist, which is great. So I'm going to push you here, and then hammer fist, front kick, which moves me up, and hammer fist, and if I shove you, you do six damage. So if I shove you this way, you're gonna take the damage and then this pipe is gonna take you out. Pop. Okay, so they come up. Combo finisher does 20 damage. Deal eight plus two damage per combo to an enemy up to six tiles away. So this yellow tells me how much damage it does in total. This enemy has 18 health. I have six combo. Let's just finish it. Cool back spin kick. And that is the level. 
reach. Uh, I got the, oh yeah, right, the side objective was to reach combo. So we did get that, we got the money, and now we get to draft another card. Road Punch deals four damage and deals one stun when the target has no block. If they are stunned, they cannot act this turn, so that's pretty great. Anything that's crowd control is going to be really powerful in these games. Um, and stun just keeps them from acting. So you've got an enemy who's doing a big attack in front of, uh, and they're right in front of you. Throat punch them, you stun them, they're not going to do that big hit. And then these are both more of the same thing that I have. So adding a second front kick or head smash will make my deck more consistent. I will more frequently be able to use this ability. I'm going to go for the throat punch because I think that crowd control is going to be really powerful. Now we got a gym. So I can upgrade. Right, is this is what I'm doing here. Okay, upgrade cards. So I could buy a card, which is what this says. These are things I don't have, or I could get one more in my deck. Or I could spend 60 to remove a card from my deck. And in deck builders, often you reach the point where you want to remove less powerful cards from your deck so that you are more consistently getting to use the more powerful card. So let's think about the deck that we have. We've got push and shove. We've got some movement. We've got this big combo finisher. We've got a little bit of stun. So what is going to add to this? Being able to push an enemy. So this doesn't do much damage, but it does push. This is more movement. And this is an attack for eight for one. Quick block is free defense, and that's pretty cool. If I was going to build toward a counter deck, I think quick blocks would be great because I would get myself into the middle of a bunch of fights and want two or three enemies attacking me at once, and then I need the block to be able to weather their attacks so that I can do all the counters. So let's see what happens if we try to upgrade a card. And if we click there, we'll see what happens when you upgrade it. So a push does six damage and it pushes them. And what I'm hoping, um, if I'm going to be using push a lot, is I push an enemy into a wall or into another enemy. So they're going to take damage from the collision, and this means they do, they take six from the push itself, then damage from the collision, and then ideally damage from being attacked. So that's a pretty good option. But it costs 80 of our 110, which is a lot. So this tells you how much it costs to upgrade a card. So I could upgrade several cards um, at once because I could take a look at these uh, cheaper ones. So what happens if I improve step? It becomes free. That's really appealing. And I've got slip. Slip is um, move to either side of adjacent enemy or move one tile. Slip is really powerful because it's a way more versatile move. So I want to upgrade that. And so now I've got my upgraded slip and I only have 50 left. So I could upgrade, looks like one of these cards that cost 40 or I go back and I could buy one of these cards. So, what do I want to do? Let's buy that quick block, and then we don't have the money to upgrade anything else. So we're going to go back, and we've done all the stuff at the gym. We could buy this quick strike. So I'm going to look at my deck again to see if I want, if I like that. So I've got one quick strike here. It does eight damage for one, which is pretty good. But we've got these other abilities that don't do as much damage, but they do move the enemy. And that's really building toward our... Um, the strategy I would like to do of moving the enemy around, uh, around the field. We're kind of moving away from this counter strategy, and I think that's okay. Counter strategy might be a little bit more something to, to build toward um, later in the game, either when there's more, when I've got more cards that I can use, or if I'm starting with a different kind of deck that's predisposed to being able to do counters. So there's going to be four targets at the motorcycle club. This enemy gave energy um, block. Heavy enemies cannot be thrown on the floor, so any card with that mechanic cannot be used against them. They are indicated with the uh, um, with the icon of a um, it's like a kettlebell. Enemies with wide attacks attack several targets in front of them, uh, several tiles in front of them instead of just one tile. So they do like a big sweeping attack or like a spin kick or something. Some enemies can give their allies armor, increasing their block periodically. If you prevent them from acting during their turn, for example, by stunning or throwing them, that ability will not trigger. Well, we do have that throw punch. 
so I don't have it this turn. And I don't have the slip to get behind this enemy. And you're gonna attack. So if I'm here, 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 or there, this enemy's gonna attack me. And this is this enemy's name is Charm. Okay. Not Biggin or Burly. So our bonus objective is complete the fight within eight turns, and we have to beat all four enemies. Um, deals 12 damage in an arc and gives allies four block at the start of each turn. So what can I do about this enemy? So I can front kick, move them away, and then they're in a position where I can knock them into the wall. Because you're going to do 12 damage. I could just throw up some block and get you up against the wall for next turn. I think that's what I want to do. So this will be one, two, three. This moves me forward. Advance and go six. Okay. So if I used Quick Strike, I wouldn't be able to do all of what I was thinking. Um, oh, wait. Because I just uh, front kick moves me. Yes, so I can't do this. We do that damage. And then I'm going to do a front kick, which moves you. Okay. Oh, that was the thing that I, I counted correctly. I was because I want to be able to do both the block and the dash um, because I'm still getting attacked twice here. So, what are my options? So I could dash another way, and that enemy shoots that enemy, which isn't bad. But you're giving everybody block all the time, which I I really would like to not. So now I'm going to do quick block. And I'm just accepting that I'm going to take a little bit of damage. But I can do a rollback, which I had three for, uh, per fight. So I'm not going to do the quick strike. I'm going to do the front kick. And then I'm going to dash forward, quick block, and block. So now I've got the block to be able to survive this hit without taking any damage. And this enemy shoots at me. So you spin around and punch. Then you're giving everybody block, which is fun. You've got 58. So, oh, I think what I want to do eventually, uh, maybe the way to do this for better, is to move over here and get it so that I can push this enemy out of the, the level. Because if we look at alt, we see that red aura is someone will uh, just be out if they if they get moved to that section. So you're attacking up to two spaces away. So. If I can move you to here, that would just be great because you'll take damage from two different sources. So I'm going to slip this way. Why can't I slip over here? Um, I want to slip move to either side of adjacent enemy. I should be able to do this. Let's look at this. Move to either side of adjacent enemy. This enemy is adjacent. Can I only do it the enemy that I'm looking at? block, you're attacking up to 10. Yeah, we need way more block. Okay, so if I do emergency move to here, and then... Oh, I should have used step and then emergency move. Slip. Um, now I can shove you to here. And now you're going to get shot and punched. So that's what I wanted. And then I'm going to step to here. And I'm going to counter. And just quick block. This is all. This doesn't matter. So you attack. And then you get shot. And then you do a big punch. So this enemy's down to one health. I don't know if there's a way that I could have done that so that they... Uh, Stun is an active satisfactor, and that's an enemy from acting. It goes to effect the moment they get stunned and clears after one turn. So I've got this threat punch. So I could stun you, which I think is what I want to do. So we're going to shift to here. We're going to throat punch this enemy. Oh, I have to I have to go through their plot. So let's roll back. Um, throat punch says, 
deal one stun when the target has enough block. So I have to get rid of their block first. So I'm gonna shift. Hmm, do I want to shift this way? And then push you. No, I think I wanna go. So I'm gonna shift to here. I'm gonna do a hammer punch to get rid of your block, right? You have no blocks. Now I can throw a punch you. So you're stunned. And then I can push can push you away so you don't punch to me. Oh, this only takes combo. Let's see. What does it do? Try that again because I know that I have combo finisher. Shift. Let's do hammer this to you. stayed with the with what I had last time. Stunning that enemy is better. But I can do combo finisher to you now, which is damage. Um, puts me into your attack though. Which is not great. Well, we're learning. Um, and you attack your uh, your other ally, which is good. So you're gonna punch me can I, who can I move? I can do a quick kick, a push, head smash. So that ends combo. You've got a lot of health still. So maybe I want to get rid of these things. Five turns is pretty uh, is uh, interesting because this is a turn three I think. Maybe that's just how many you're gonna have next turn. Do step and dash, long strike, head smash, quick kick. So I can do, 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 you do six damage and you do ten. So I'm gonna move you to here to get attacked. So then you'll get knocked out. So I'm gonna move here and then here. And then I wanna kick you to there. Because you're gonna get knocked out. You attack first, thankfully. So you're gonna do ten damage to this and me, six after defense, and then you're gonna get punched out. Both of those enemies, which is great. And you're gonna run up and on me. Great. And I've got two quick blocks this turn, which will let me weather that as well. So let's do our quick blocks to build up our momentum. Uh, it's only attacks build up momentum. Shift and I cannot shift past that. That's fine. Push. Yeah, just get knocked into the other enemy. And then I have a list. And I could shift back to not take the damage, which I think. Well, do I want to not take the damage? It doesn't, doesn't matter. So I don't think I want to go over here because I'm going to get, bo get boxed in. Move over there. Okay, so you're gonna knock me there. You've got 17 health. So I can't slip past this enemy. Maybe you can't be. When you slip, you count as moving the enemy. Maybe that's what happens here. Front kick. Well, let's find out if I can use attack diagonally. I don't have 
have the combo. So let's do a quick strike, then a front kick. And then I can do a combo finisher. It's at range. And then you're going to attack me. But you're also going to attack that enemy. So I need to uh, clear your block before I can make your punch to stun you. Let's get the block for free. Oh, I don't have, yeah, I don't have any, I don't have to enough attacks. So I can counter, I can do a block. Um, that is enough block for everybody. So we'll just end up on that. Oh, I don't get the counter because I got to move. That's a bummer. Counter is less less uh, less effective than I thought it was because it's only in the X like front back side left um, front back left right not on the diagonals and certainly not at range two. So we've got one health left. So let's step here. Let's push you. both of those and now you're out. And then I'm going to slip over here and block. So you're all on your own now, but I'm definitely not finishing this in five turns because this has got to be turn five or six. Oh, eight turns. So we're, yeah, not, not, uh, not doing it this time. So we're at one combo. We can quick strike and then long strike. Hey, that did it. Mini boss bonus, but we did not get the um, the turn bonus, and we took a lot of damage. So this replay, we're gonna be look look a little bit messier, I think, because I'm figuring out the new enemy type and what things I can and can't do and stuff like that. Should have stayed with the, uh, the throat punch approach when I was doing all of those uh, rewinds, because then the enemy would not have given the block to everybody, and that would have made it easier to take one or two of them out. That turn was beautiful, though. And then that, that one I moved in on, which means that I actually took the attack when I didn't want to. So I wish that this wasn't like a counter for that turn. That part was really good. I do like the idea of maneuver so that the big enemy that's swinging is taking out the other enemies. That, I think, is a good approach for these. It's just, I need to... Yeah. I'm using all these advancing attacks, which puts me back in the range of the, um, the big swing. Upgraded card, but I don't get the money bonus. So what I'm gonna upgrade? Let's see. Oh, I wanted, I wanted to see what the upgrade was. That's very silly. So the interface uh, in the gym is that if you click on a card to see what happens if you upgrade it, it shows you. And for that uh, bonus, it just said, oh, that's what you wanted to choose to upgrade. So I don't know what this. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. So I got shove. The shove also does damage now. That's still pretty cool. So let's go to an event. I don't know what this means. In a brief period of downtime, you notice a new boxing gym has opened. So we have 35. Join the gym and uh, gain a new te technique. Add a new card, lose 50 money. I only have 35. Do I get the thing if I... Um, I do, because I added the card Overdrive. Overdrive. The combo is uncapped for the next two turns, so you can gain as much combo as you want, I'm guessing. Is that, is that what that's, uh, that means? I could go to Medical, but I wonder if it costs money. It does, see? So I have zero money because of the last event that I did, so now this Medical thing is 
I, don't, I can't do anything with it. So I go to the pool room. Fight in white spaces. Oh, look at this. Got an enemy with double shotguns. That's not great. Okay, so this enemy is doing multiple attacks. Three, uh, three attacks at 10 damage each. Shotgun biker with a sawed off. This one says sawn off as opposed to sawed off. I wonder if this game is made by Europeans and the uh, the idiom about what this what that kind of shotgun means is different there. So I want to put somebody in front of this enemy to get shot. Can I do that this turn? So if I go over to here, I can shove you, but that's only going to move you one spot. Can I move you this way? And then you're going to just sort of attack one in front of you. I don't know if I can do that this turn. So I have a head smash. I have to be over here. Do that. you into you. So if I shove here, I would then need to push this enemy, which means I need to be able to get over there. Let's see if we can do that. So I shove you and move you there, and then I, let's use emergency move. Now I can't, I can't move through enemies, enemy spaces when I do this. But if I move here, I could push and then they attack that way, and I would just take some damage. So let's see if I can do that. So we're going to move up here, and then we're going to push you. And then I would take 6 damage here, but I can emergency move, so I'm not taking the damage. But that person is not against something, so I'm going to wait. Okay. You did damage, but then knocking into the other one. You did 3 times 10. I don't think that it did. Oh, okay, it deals damage at the th range of three. Maybe that must be it. Instead of 30. Three attacks of 10 damage each. Oh, it still did a bunch of damage to you. So what do I got? Um, so I can shift. So I'm right behind you here, which is great. But I don't want to stun you because I do want you to shoot this enemy. Oh, it's it goes one, two, three. It's, deal, uh, it's a very short range shotgun, so it does damage in front and then the two diagonals. So that's what that means. So I want to move you if I can, because you're not doing any damage right now. But it does not knock anybody. Oh, unfortunate. So I'm just going to do some damage there. And I'll go ahead and... So I can't retain this, so I might as well do the damage. Um, learning. So now, because the only movement I have is step, I'm stuck in here. So I got cornered, which is really not good. But I could kick this one and then move, um, which will at least get me not well. It would still get me attacked by by all of this um, because I'd be there and this shotgun still attacks there. So if I move through there, I can at least step here and counter because you're going to do six damage and I have eight block and then I'm going to counter attack for one and you have 15 so I'm going to do a long strike to you so that when I do counter you're going to be out and then this enemy is going to do 10 more damage to that enemy which should take me oh no I got knocked back okay let's um Let's restart the level once, and then if we, if we can't do it, we'll just let the run fail and we'll start over and see what the kind of meta progression is. And I think either way, I will take a break um, after this fight. Okay. So, if I 
If I do my movement over this way, then I can move you into here, and that's going to be good. So let's dash, and then we'll emergency move to here, and then I can shove you to there. And oh, I should have pushed and then shoved you because um, you'll you take the knockback damage. So I don't have. I don't have the range for this. And I have the combo for um, the finisher. That's good. Cool. So that enemy is out of there. Oh, here's a new one. Maybe like a enemy is going to use block the same way as you. Um, yep. You can reduce their block to zero or use attacks that um, ignore block. A biker. Low ranked but extra tough. Punches for eight. Gains five block at the start of each turn. So you've got a biker helmet. So I could shift to get to here. But then I'm not doing a lot of damage. Let's see, if I shift to here, I, you would attack me for, um, for eight damage. And I have enough block for that. Ooh, and if I throat punch you, then you don't get your block extra, so that, that sounds good. We're gonna shift to uh, shift is only one spot, so is this pushing? So we're going to throw punch it so that you don't shoot us. And then shift block, hammer fist, and then See, so here's this is risky because I'm up against a wall. This enemy might come up here. This enemy wants to be at range. And if I shift this way, I get shot. So I think I'm just gonna block. Because this enemy is unlikely to come. They'd have to move one, two, three, four to be able to get over to here to attack along this line. shove you there so you're going to punch that enemy, but it would mean that you're not going to get shot. Okay. Um, so I can kick you and push you. And then I can shove you to move you over there so you don't attack me and you get attacked. And then I can step here punch you. And then I don't have the energy to counter, so you get shot. So we're going to uncap combo. Okay, it's either side of adjacent enemy is diagonal this way. So can I slip? I can slip to here. That lets me get shot is, is the unfortunate thing. Uh, advance and then steal six. So I don't want to advance because you're shotgunning. So let's see what happens if you roll back. If I slip to here and then I quick block, but then I front kick you instead, you're going to absorb that hit for me. Yeah, that's better. You punch, then you get shot. Great. So, I've got a combo finisher to do 20 damage. So what if I quick kick, and you get extra damage from the, from the knockback, and now combo finisher. And then I'm going to slip forward, quick block, and counter. Can you attack me? I'm gonna attack back, and we'll see if I can counter a punch. Or counter a, a bullet. I can. So then, what have you got left? You got six health left. So 
so I can shove you. Nice. Okay, much better. We got the bonus for uh, finishing the fight quickly, and now we get to, so we get another combo finisher. Interesting. Taunt, force an enemy to attack immediately. The enemy will not attack on their turn. Get over here. Move, force a character to move two tiles toward you. Interesting. I like taunt. Um, but first, we are going to... I like how easily you dodge the gun. Yeah, it's incredibly, like, Hong Kong or super superhero action movie. Like that, So this is what it looks like when Shella does a, a body resist on getting shot, I think, is what happens here. Um, so we're going to go to OBS, and I'm going to do this real quick. And I'm going to use the restroom and um, stretch a little bit, and then I'll be back. We will have more fights in tight spaces. We've got one, two, looks like a, a few different, uh, a few more fights left, and I definitely need to get to medical. We'll see what happens. Back in a minute. Okay, we're back. And it seems like this top left is doing okay. Uh, I need to uh, try to remember that when we get into the next fight. Uh, and uh, kids are asleep. 
Outer Wild seems like an absolutely stunning game. I I played about 90 minutes of it and die like kind of got through two or three cycles learning some stuff, but feeling like I absolutely do not have a command of the uh, like ship controls, uh, and so I haven't gone back to it since, which is uh, I should do so. I think event is going to be good here because I would like I would love to not get shot. Um, nope. Unfortunately, I have to take damage if I want to go do this. Um, oh, you're MI6. Well, yeah, uh, even then stuff happens. It does feel like a very big uh, unexpected stuff happens game for a long time until you understand how all of the systems interconnect and then you kind of just the galaxy is your oyster is what it seems like it is. So I don't think I can spare 10 health. So that's very sad. And now I get another event. Hidden gym with uh, big discounts. Cool. So heavy strike costs two, deal 14 damage to a target up to two tiles away. Gain a momentum, move one tile in any direction. So focus for gaining momentum seems pretty great. Slip. What if we upgraded cards? So with 60, we could potentially upgrade Quick Block and something for. Oh, these are 13. What happens here? You just become free. Okay, yeah, that's that sounds great. What if I make my movement? Drive yourself up adjacent to me and maintain combo. Oh, okay, that's the. That's what you get for the upgrade there. Quick Strike becomes 14 damage. That's pretty good. But I think I don't want to spend all my money because I need to have some money for medical. Right? So what if... Oh, I just bought a slip. Oops. So now I can go here. Uh, yep. If I had not spent that other money, I could have paid for a heal. I bet. Well, we're learning. We're going to go into the final scenario uh, uh, with not very much health. So here's a boss. Is this boss Sabretooth from the X-Men? Yeah, because I think this is like, I guess you're going up against a, like a Norwegian or a Scandinavian gang. So uh, we have the last fight in a pub. And these detractor movement will turn to face you when you move during your turn. Oh, that's interesting. So that's the boss. It says this uh, turn to face thing. Enemies with summon abilities will periodically add new enemies to the fight. Summon minions do not count for the level's objectives, but killing them will give you a higher score. You can identify them by the icon of a little meeple. There's a big meeple and a little meeple. Okay, so this is the biker boss. He has 16 damage up to two tiles away, and will turn to face the, the player. So I want to get on a diagonal with you, is I think what happens. Um, or I'm going to need defense. So if I shove you, I can shove you to here, and then you get shot by your buddy, and you can't hit me. So that's good. Um, well, I think that's the thing to start. So we're going to shove you in a way that does damage. And then I get up to you. In a world where everyone has forgotten the spirit of Christmas. Uh, actually, I think this is uh, one woman. One woman will teach it to them again, one punch at a time. It's Santa Claus, fists of holly jolly joy. Um, Arv, that's terrible and wonderful. Welcome to the stream. This time, Santa punches back. Let's see. There's all sorts of. I guess there there are there have been like pulp Santa action movies and things. The person you're fighting is Santa Claus. That's true. So I'm actually the person who's trying to ruin Christmas. So maybe that's what's happening. Um, yes, this person is clearly more Santa. Um, so if I can shift, I cannot shove you far enough to get into there. So I think instead what I'm gonna do 
is shift here, so I'm not getting shot. And then I'm gonna block. Because I need to keep my emergency mode. I get shot. And I have 12 health left, so I really don't want to get shot by either of these enemies. I don't have the combo for that. I can slip, but then he will turn to face me. And I don't. Um, I, I kick you. You will still turn. You still try to come after me. You have how much health? 25. If I move here, I can then slip to your side. So if I move here and then slip to here, I can punch and then I would need to move you. Let's see, if I move you, you don't shoot Santa. So let's stay where we are and just do a quick slip. Yeah, if I were over here, I could advance and then push. So that's two combo. Hard to dodge. Yeah, it's very hard to dodge being shot from behind if you don't know what's coming, right? So you have 11 health left. You don't have the block, so I could throw a punch you. You don't count. Slip here, and then we're going to throat punch to stun you, and quick block, and then we get some extra damage on the hammer fist from that. And he is going to shoot. They are going to shoot me, but I'm going to take six damage. All right, let's roll back and see if we can do this in a way that doesn't involve getting. Um, Slip to here and then throw a punch in hand at this game. Um, yeah, because you're shooting that way. That's fine. I want to not get shot, is, is the big thing, because I have so little health. So I'm going to uncap that. Smash into there is very good. Of course, I'm going to attack immediately. Okay. So. Let's put you in there, and then let's do a head smash for big damage, and then and I'm gonna make you. Oh no, nope, I should have made the person who was with the gun. Let's roll back again. If I move, I want to see if there's a way to make somebody shoot so that then I don't take damage. But unfortunately, I've got the crosshairs here, so I don't know that that was going to work. So let's go ahead and do all the damage we can. And the head smash. And then overdrive and step. And I guess, ah, I'm making you shoot. Yeah. Okay, so that is, uh, that's a run. We did not win, that's fine. But we got some meta progression here. Uh, 15 enemies defeated. Here's the deck that I built. Um, that's some money left, scores. I think with a game like this, not beating the last boss, your first run, makes a lot of sense because I'm learning the game, we're getting some meta progression, I did some, had some definite misplays. I'm trying to figure out um, how everything all fits together. And I've now unlocked some cards, which are gonna be uh, become available for future runs. So Group Punch, which we got some good use out of, but I uh, misplayed a couple times because you need to, you, you only stun an enemy if they don't have block. Power through, and so, ooh, separate. That looks interesting. They can move enemies apart from each other. And like a three by three combo. Nice. So let's do a new game. 
draft deck mode. Uh, draft deck from a series of card choices rather than using the um, three. Interesting. So this is uh, difficulty scaling. Let's wait off on draft deck mode for a little bit. Um, yeah, let's do classic plus again. So we're going to play this Agent 11. We have, another, we have a number of emerging situations that could use your skills. I'm basically British. So now we have to choose our deck, but we only have the balance deck so far. We can unlock these other decks through playing. I'm very excited to see some of these other decks. So here's what we start with. It looks like it is basically the deck that we have. But again, we're back to, no, uh, to zero. There's nothing that's upgraded. We haven't gained anything else. So now we're going to play the Death's Head Biker Gang fight again. After the Biker Gang Wars of the 90s, we thought we'd seen the last of the North Gangs, but they're back with a network of so-called clubhouses across Scandinavia. We're seeing a massive increase in smuggling operations on Northern European borders. We'll just stop to it, number 11. Punch, 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 punch. Lady in the men's room. Fight. I take this music. Uh, so I've been rewatched, or I rewatched The Matrix, the first Matrix movie earlier this week because Waypoint is doing uh, rewatch uh, podcasts. And so, like, I think the first time I heard this type of techno was I was 16 and watching The Matrix. Um, so. Also, the music from that movie still actually absolutely rules, and the movie is very good. Uh, the Waypoint people liked the second and third movies on this rewatch, so I'm curious to see what I will think of them um, as I get to rewatch them in the next couple of weeks. But right now, we are about to get punched and should do something about that. Sunny has 20 health. So that does 6 plus another 4 for knockback. And I can shift. So, let's quick strike. Are you attacking up to two spaces away? You are attacking up to two spaces away. Okay, that's fine. So I counter. So your attack is five damage. And we're gonna kick you into the wall for some knockback. And then you have two health left. So if I push you, you will be out. So I'll knock your head. Again. But I'm going to go ahead and See, I have eight block and you do five damage, so that's fine. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get to do my counter because they're two spaces away, but I'll hold on to my emergency move and the rest of the fight. But they did knock me back, which puts me lined up with this person. But I can let's see. So I can emergency move to get out of the way if I need to because you attack at one range. You do five damage and I'm not. So uh, I think this is an exit. So if I get pushed again, I would just lose. So I need to not do that. So I'm gonna hit you. And then I'm gonna do a hammer fist. And then I'm gonna step here. And then I'm going to emergency move to here and block. So these enemies aren't attacking each other, but this only has four left, and which should make it easier to take them out next turn. So you're going to uh, do a big kick from two spots away. So first, so that will get rid of all of my combo, but I don't want to do that. I want to take you out, and then I'm going to dash, and then I'm going to slip. I don't have the energy to do a head smash, but uh, nor do I have the. Well, I guess I do have the combo. Can I do that for free? I can! Very nice. It's good to remember that the combo finisher does not cost any momentum. You just have to have the combo for it. So they, kick, they would kick to nothing. I want to not get kicked here. You've got six health left. So I'm just going to kick you in the jimmy, and you're going to be done. So, finished extra objective. Took four turns. And let's have our replay. I love uh, finishing an enemy off by uh, pushing them into the wall so they like crack their head. And they're 
to slip around here. Pop the last one who's done. Sneak back around, circle, spin kick, and end with a big arm kick. Yes, I, I'm approximately 12. The kids are asleep. Sometimes I'm 12. Um, I could also be the Nards. Um, and let's see. The Family Jewels is another silly one. So counter, I didn't get a lot of use out of. So I'm, I'm pondering getting another shift instead. But this still does give 8 block. This block gives 10, which is nice. Um, Let's try shift, and I'm going to go to the bar, hoping to be able to do stuff at the gym, and I'm just going to try to be protect. What am I doing? Oh, I'm protecting somebody. That's new. So, the British ambassador, <laughs> okay, sure, in yellow is a defenseless civilian, and it is your mission to protect him. He is frightened and will not move of his own accord. Enemies will target him as well as you. You can attack the ambassador, but he won't damage. He won't take damage from you. Um, use this to your advantage by pushing him out of harm's way. Um, if you manage to protect the ambassador, there will be an extra reward for you at the end of the fight. So I have to also get rid of these other enemies. Enemies with auto attack attack you the moment you step into their range of attack. They are indicated with the inflict. Alarm hazard icon. Be careful. Even once they have used their auto attack, enemies may still be able to attack normally on their turn. Okay, so you are auto attack. And you attack at once. And auto attack once per one turn. So, I guess I could hit smash you, but then you would make a counter. So, I guess we're going to step here. Emergency move there. And uh, this is great. So what happens? I push you. And then I front kick you. You knock that one. You get uh, knock into that one. And I can't use head smash there because I cannot head smash into a another uh, another character. You have 28 health, so eight damage you can survive. The monocle is making it harder for me to be super sympathetic for this ambassador. I do have to admit that. Um, some, some eat the rich energy is coming out here. So you attack one space away. Complete fight within five turns. Okay, so. We go here, and then we slip, and then. So I'm going to quick kick you, because then, oh, I didn't have the energy, so let's roll back. So if I go here, and then instead attack you, and then... attack two spots away. No, you attack one spot away. So my quick block means I'm fine. And the ambassador does not take any damage this thing. This uh, security is not moving around the whole lot. So now they're moving up on me and they're all coming in on me. So you will counter, but if I if you have a shift, I can't shift between them. See, let's look. Shift will only let me move over there, so I can't go to here, unfortunately. But I can shift. Okay, I can't shift past you. So I shift here, and then shift here. You have seven health, so let's do that. And I can't move you into here, unfortunately. But no, no damage for the ambassador this turn. And then you are coming up on me. Combo finisher. I don't have the combo for it, and you only have 20 health. But you would counter me. Well, here's the thing. Will I be able to counter his counter? Let's find out. 
Uh, okay, so counter did not provoke an attack from this enemy. Um, so, if, okay, so... But the counter did not increase my um, combo, which is a bummer. So, we're going to attack for 10. I actually am going to just uh, block, because then you attack me and I attack you, counter attack you for more, and I have the health to be able to take this, and you're not attacking the ambassador. I was in against the door. He just shoved me. And he did not do that. That's very funny. More things to keep track of. Focus down on you. So, you are coming. But I can attack the ground space again. What if I step and then hurt the people? And then keep. Hammer fist, and you're out. Not block. Okay. So I did take a little bit of damage, but now the security is out of this fight. And nobody's attacking the ambassador this turn. We've got 20 health. This. Yes. And a long strike. That's six. Closing in on me, and this uh, the goon is going after the ambassador. So I can do a combo finisher, which will do 16 to you. Will it knock you back? Advance forward target 16. Okay, so I can I can do that. Combo finisher, so you're out. A little bit of an over uh, overkill, but I. So I shift to here, I do this, and defend, the ambassador takes a hit, 19 and 18, and I have two enemies left, I need to finish it in two turns, you have that, that, okay, yeah, so taking that extra slip or whatever it was means that my deck is way more movement oriented and I have fewer attacks proportionately, which gives me a lot of um, versatility, but it means that our slip is the one that I like because I can, I can do this diagonal forward move. You are you have eleven health. So I can yeah, I don't I guess I can do this. And then I shift one forward and then I do head smash and you're out. And I don't take an attack. So you move all the way up on me, which is great. Can I get to three combo? No, because I have too many movement cards. So, I think. Um, I 
flip. And I push. And I block. So I'm not gonna get this uh, doll this money bonus, but ambassador is probably okay. So they move up on me. And what that? that quick strike. Nice uh, quick uppercut. And hammer fist and then out. Enjoy lunch. See you in a bit. I did not get the uh, quick complete, so I definitely don't want a movement uh, a movement card here. Throat punch was pretty handy. Let's go ahead and draft that throat punch again, and I'll just try to be more effective with it. And we're gonna upgrade cards with 80, and I've got 40 health. What happens if I upgrade the throat punch? It deals goes up to 10 damage, which is pretty good. I wonder if does the does the do you do the damage and then check for stun? Like, does the fact that throat punch is up to 10 damage make it more likely to be able to do the stun? Um, I'm curious about that, but I don't know that I'm enough curious enough to spend all of my money on that uh, to get on to get that upgrade. Head smash takes 90. Step becomes free. What about slip? Slip also becomes free. But it costs 60. I can upgrade something for 20, so I want to upgrade slip. And then. I thought there was something for 20. Oh well. Um, back. Maybe I can buy you for. Okay. Let's buy a long strike. Because there's definitely been times when we've had enemies two spaces away, and that will be good. So now we go to the motorbike bay. So we've got lots of things to push people into, and we can knock them out here. Oh, look at this! We've got a new enemy with a big attack range. Charges up to three tiles to deal 10 damage. Well, you're going to hit you, so that's great already. And you get blocked every turn. And cannot be down, so I can't throw it onto the ground. Waiting for target. Okay, so they have to... Um, they are not actually attacking yet, because I'd have to prime them by, by getting in that spot. I don't know that I can... Let's see if I can do that this turn. I have several moves. I, don't, I didn't get my slip here. Where do I want to go after you? So I, have, I have my emergency moves. So I can just move two up to you right away. And then hammer fist and counter, because you do eight damage, yeah. So I'm going to dash. Counter and hammer fist. Yep, yeah, so that's fine. And there's a counter, which does the damage because I got rid of your block. I'm going to fight with my second turn, so okay. So you've got nine health left. If I'd upgraded my quick strike, I could use that to just take them out. Um, 14. So if I do 8 and then 4, that's actually not enough to take you out because you have 14 health effectively. Wishing for a shove. If I had a shove, then I could knock you back and then shove you into the wall, um, which would be great. This I think, is where I have to knock you out of the world. Hmm, well, let's just see if we can do as much damage to you as possible. And then this kick will push you so you don't attack me. And now I'm getting shot. Shift. Oh, okay, so I can't shift all the way back here. Taking damage here. But this is not the fastest approach in trying to, to do this uh, attack. So you keep 
can't get to there. So if I could push you this way, I could make you get shot. Or if I can move over here, I can head smash you. You've got 42 health, you've got 20. So what if I slip? Oh, because you yeah, don't have an adjacent on me. That's fine. So we're going to move here, and then we're going to slip, and then... We're gonna do this attack, and then we're gonna do head smash for a nice finisher. You've got, we're gonna get your defense back, but you only have two health left. You need three combo to get the combo finisher for free. health. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get the, uh, the quick win uh, bonus on these either. On this one either. But if I get over to you, I can, sm I can smoosh. And then slip. I've got... So if I do, if I end my combo first, I can do the next attack of game combo. But then you are going to attack me because I didn't quite finish you off. And yeah, I don't have a lot of uh, moving the enemy stuff, or I don't have the, the shove which I drafted earlier in the last, last time. So. So if I stayed over here and shifted toward the enemy and used a bunch of block, it'd stay there and probably stay there again, which means I could have maybe gotten to here and started to try to push them toward um, get, knocking them out of the board because we see here that that is um, it's like a door. So now you're very tough. Probably the thing to do with this enemy is to, um, to try to knock them out of the, the level and that's how you're going to finish in only four turns. You do 10 damage, so I block, I counter, and see. Oh, maybe I didn't want to do that because then I won't get to do the counter. I want to do the counter. So let's block, let's counter. Attack and then I counter and it does damage. Combo finisher does 14. Um, and I can shift. I can slip to here, which means that I do combo finisher and then head smash. Can do both. Smoosh. Then I can shift out of the way. So you come over that way. So you have nine defense for each So I do that. And then I do this. So that now I can throw punch you and run a top. I get quick block in. Okay. 
And then power finish, you have 14, you have 19, 9 plus 10. So quick break, long sword, and c -c -c combo finisher. Oh, knock the welding mask off of him. So not the not the most efficient, but here's our replay. Comes running after me. I slip over, start work, working on the biker here, trading blows. Gunner comes over, hit in there, move him back, jump backwards, knock the shot. Then they're gonna come over and converge, I'm slipping around, focus on the gun on the pistol arrow here, and then another guy comes in. Turn around, shove the biker back, step up, punch, get out of the way of the welder. Slip around, swoosh, and then a couple more hits here. So this is where I should have moved toward the enemy to try to knock him out of the, the level. a lot of hits in that last turn, that's pretty fun. So, didn't get this bonus, but I did get to upgrade a card. Ooh, upgraded card. So, I get to add an upgraded card. Move any target to any adjacent tile on the board, no combo gain. Target will turn to face away. Yeah, I want to grapple. Let's let's play around with, with that. Um, let's do an event here. Lose enhancement. Oh, okay, so this is all bad. I can lie and get punched. The cold kick of water wakes you from your slumber. You seem to have been kidnapped, and some unpleasantness appears to be forthcoming. It's very understated. Some unpleasantness. So we lose enhancement. That would take away the emergency move. We take damage, so we're going to fight our way out. I'm, interested. I'm curious to see how tough this fight is. This is like a prison... Um, Thing. Okay, so we got the, the um, this burly enemy who does this, like, the spinning attack, right? Sweep strike. And two normal thugs with, we start with defense, so we give defense a turn. And where's our exits? Our exits are over here. We just have to defeat all the enemies, we don't get any bonuses. Emergency move, I could do two. Slip is around and so I can't slip. So look at where the, the tables are. The slip keep me from going to one of these diagonal spots because I can't get up on these, unfortunately. over here because I want to draw enemies this way so that they I can knock them out of the, um, the level. So I put some work on that one, but here comes security. And this one is okay, are you still, are you staying back or not? So I cannot be down, but I can grapple you. So I could put I could use grapple to put them here and then I don't have anything else that uh, I could push. I could just push you right out. Okay, great. So I'm going to grapple you and put you here. And then I'm just going to push you out of the level. Right on. And so now I'm not getting attacked. I have a long strike so I can, I can shift all the way over to here, which is great. And then I'm going to hit you, which you've got some defense. And then I'm going to shift all the way back over here to pull enemies in. We're going to be able to then grapple and push out of the level again. Fun. Okay, so I've got 
combo finisher, which does not push enemies. Quick strike, block, dash, step. We've got like do 13 to take you out. And because there's no turn limit here, I can really take my time. Um, but I need three combo. I'm not going to be able to get three combo because they have too much movement. It doesn't. It just takes away my combo. So do the hit on you. dash to here and then block because then if I get a push I can take this enemy out but I will probably get cornered when uh, after this turn. Oh no you uh okay so you ran around that way. I do have slip and I can or I can head smash you. You've got nine will we'll beat you. You do four damage and push. We do any damage, so I don't want to stay here because I get pushed and then take extra damage. Um, I can head smash you. Can kick, which pushes you. So if I push you, then you're gonna be down to 26, and then I can do 12, which takes you to 12. And I guess I could throw a punch. So that's that's not bad. There's a counter, protects me here, and then kick. Oh, yeah, it tells you. Yeah, you counter. Huh? You gonna counter again? No, you get one counter. Um, slip there. Okay, you have four defense. Well, I can just kick you into that one. And the combo finisher is free if I get to not that much combo, but I don't have enough attacks, so I can dash and then throat punch you. That's interesting. Just run right into uh, okay. Moving up against them uh, still counts. That's a bummer. Oh. So let's roll back that turn. Because you have defense because of that, that enemy. So what if I, can I get to you? I can get to you. Oh, no, because I, y'all are, uh, but I can combo and you don't, you counter when, uh, even if I do something, I'm not counting it. Okay, that's good to know. where I get the grapple and then the push. So this is I'm slightly worse off than I was because I did the damage to this enemy instead of that enemy. So I'd have to move, then grapple, and then push. If I try to do the grapple and then push them to you, you will counter on them. Which is not what I'm looking for. Try to something wacky. I'm slipping by you. I'm gonna push you so that then I can grapple. I'm gonna put you here so that you spin and attack your own guys. And I'm gonna hit you. Okay. Yeah, good times. That one's getting just getting out of the way. Please don't make me. Uh, so one more combo and I can put a finisher on you. 
but you've got a lot of health. Instead, I could quick start you, and then combo finisher to take you out. You're going to do 12, right? So instead, I want to um, step here and then dash to go over here so that I'm not in your range anymore. So there's another security. And you're going to turn around. So. Hello! Let me look over at my OBS. Uh, thank you for following Sad Pirate Clown. Welcome! That question is, we have 49 followers, so one more follower will unlock the, um, the giveaway on the channel, which I think is going to be, uh, here, let me grab it, grab it real quick. is going to be not just a paperback copy of Annihilation Aria, but also the audiobook edition. So I know a lot of people who are following the channel here have read the book, but you may not have uh, listened to the audiobook. And audio is very fun because the performers kind of bring their own artistic um, abilities to the reading. And uh, I hear a lot of people talk about liking audio as a way of rereading a book. So that's pretty fun and of course I'm happy to sign these and I'll ship them to anywhere in uh, the kind of continental 48. If you win and are elsewhere in the world um, you can get the ebook of Annihilation Aria and uh, I will throw in the ebook of um, Jonathan's season one because uh, you know two, two books is more value than one. Overseas shipping is just so expensive right now that I can't really uh, cannot easily justify doing that, um, but I will I will make sure that you are uh, well rewarded um, if you are the winner um, when we get to that 50 follower mark. So let's see how we are doing in this fight. We've got this big, uh, big not friend, a lot of health left. You've got 30, you're very close to being done. So I can't quick kick you and you're just out, but if I leave you where you are, the enemy, this enemy will take you, uh, take you out entirely. Now, if I push you, then you don't get to counter on me, right? Is that how that works? Yes. But if I move here, you will, you, know, you will attack me. So I need to be aware of that. Um, you attack for how much? Four and a push. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, hi, John. Um, I'm really digging it. I, I uh, as I said earlier on the stream, I looked at it a little bit when it was way earlier in early access, but I did not internalize. I, like, I just didn't watch enough play to internalize how everything flowed, and that it was this, like, Oh, this is like Slay the Spire meets uh, Into the Breach, but like it's John Wick or other like very fun cinematic um, fist fights. So I'm digging this. I think I will keep playing it off stream and then also continue to stream it because I can build out having more decks and things like that. So uh, very cool. I may have to go watch more streams of this and it's all good. I'm very glad that you're also enjoying it. So let's see, what should we do here? Yeah, Into the Breach. Um, I have not played that in quite some time. I need to go back to it. I think I did unlock... Yeah, I don't remember if I unlocked the special squad at the end, um, but they really totally changed the game. I have been spoiled on what it is um, since it's, uh, it was a favorite of Austin Walker's, who was the first, I guess, only EIC of Waypoint because they didn't have, they don't have an EIC after he left because of Vice Reorganization. So... Uh, I got on the Into the Breach train very early by being a waypoint this way. What should we do here? 
Because if I... Yeah, because I couldn't throw punch you earlier because you had defense. So... I don't have anything there. So I can... You have four defense, so I need to... Do some other sneaky trickery. So the, the least aggressive way of doing this is to slip this way and then um, just do the throat punch. Um, this. Yeah, because if I just slipped away here, this enemy would attack both of these, and that would be pretty good. If I slip here, I get um, I get shoved. You do 12. Thinking about, do I want to counter here? Does it take? I'd have to get to here to head smash. But then I would take the counter. But I can also then use my emergency move. But if I slip over there, I will get shot. Maybe so that maybe that isn't the thing that I want to do. So many options, this is fun and tricky. And having a rollback is both good for letting me cover up my mistakes, but also uh, incredibly dangerous and can be a trap because I've already done the thing where I roll back a pretty good turn trying to get a better turn and then fail to get a better turn, um, which is fun. So I'm gonna just slip here and call it because then you're going to spin and hit both of these enemies. Why don't you counter on the big per the big person? You should counter on, on, on this friend, who's not a friend. Um, okay. But if I get to here, you won't counter on me, right? Because you're, you, you're focusing there. You do eight, but you don't do knockback. But I can hit you and push you. Or I move here and push. So right now, you're gonna attack for 12. You have four defense, so you're gonna take eight health. But if I push you, then you're not gonna get hit there. So instead, I wanna push you. If I, if I do a front kick, go will take two health, you'll end up there, you're gonna attack that, that person. And then I can dash to here and do a kick, which will push you. Um, and put you back into the range there. Really, I want to be able to head smash somebody, but I can't, I would have to, I'd take some damage if I did that here. But maybe it's fine, because if you hit me, I, then I take four because of that. The head smash would not be enough to take you out of the fight, the thing. So I think, again, I'm gonna play a little bit more conservatively. So we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do that kick to move you back, and then I'm gonna dash over here. Then I'm gonna kick you. You're still gonna get hit. Very nice. So you don't take that counter attack, but you did knock that enemy over there, which I like. So now you're here, but I don't. I really love a grapple right now, because with a grapple, I could just take the security and throw them out the window. Uh, yeah, so I've got all these movement powers. I think drafting that extra move is is not the right call then, because my deck is um, it trends so much toward movement that I'm, I'm finding that I am not getting enough attacks in a turn uh, based on what I want. Yeah, like, I cannot wait for, uh, cannot wait to unlock the, like, grapple um, class, where it's just, like, pushes and grapples and throws, and I can just like jujitsu around the uh, around the, the level. It's gonna be amazing. So I can shift around you. Combo finisher. So Okay, I think well shift is gonna lose is gonna lose us some combo, so two goes to one, and then it goes back up to two if I hammer fist, which means I don't have enough to do a combo finisher on the enemy. But if I if I don't knock you back, you're going to push me out of the level. So I can't really handle doing that. So I'm going to have to do this approach. There, I do a hammer fist on you. And 
then I shift I'd shift over to here, but then I would still take an attack. So I'm gonna shift back to here. That means that if somebody gets there, I might be able to grapple to throw them out. Or uh, I'm gonna be able to knock people into one another. Quick box, just for good measure. Spinning around, picking out your own uh, your own your own people. Are you gonna get all the way around me? No, you're gonna get over there. So I can grapple you out of the, the level. I wonder, if I got to here, could I grapple this enemy out of the level? I don't think I could because it's two spaces away. I really should be able to flip that table. I, I wonder if there is greenery that can be manipulated. Like, this is a thing that's not bolted down so I could shove it into somebody. Uh, if that's already not already in the game, then it should be in DLC. If you're, if you're listening, game designers. Uh, there is some free ideas. So, well, grapple just does put you out of the level. What? I can't? Okay. To any adjacent tile within the board. Okay, so I cannot grapple them out of the board. I don't think I can jump on the table, because when I do slip, I can't go there, and step will not let me go there, which is unfortunate. So... I can't push you, because then you, then you don't get to counter, and that enemy can oh, okay. That's interesting. So I pushed this enemy into that enemy, which triggered that enemy's counter, which pushed them here, and then they got, uh, that attack triggered their counter, which then pushed me. I don't want to stay in the corner here, because then I'm just, then it's going to be really hard for me to, um, To not get in trouble. So if I use my emergency move now, I can then grapple and put you. Oh, okay, it would put you next to me, unfortunately, because I, grapple has to be still within one space. So I could grapple them and put them here, but then they'd spin and attack me, which isn't isn't so great. Um. Oh, let's block. If I slip, I can step, step here, and then slip here, which means only two enemies can get to me, but we'll see. Maybe they can't all get to me, because of how many spaces it is. Yeah, so you can get to there. So I'm just going to unload on you. Long strike, and then I have one left, so I throat punch you, so you don't get to attack. Uh, and then those enemies are going to close in on me, unfortunately. But you did not all the way box me in. And so here's what I can do I can grapple, and then I can put this enemy over there, and now I do get, uh, I do get hit a bit but this enemy is going to spin attack that enemy and I can do a kick which pushes you I will get uh, okay I didn't get pushed into again because I already activated your counter very nice and I can do a finish on you to do a bunch of damage and you're still going to do your attack on that guy unless I throat punch you but I don't think I want to throat punch you I think I want to shift over to here Take some more damage. So these enemies come around. The fact that they're not as able to close in on me here is very handy for me, honestly. Um, so, okay. and then a long strike will take you off the board, knock you over the, the rails there, which is fun. And let's get a counter, because if I move here, you will. Um, Come after them. So let's slip back over that way and see how they come on. So I don't think this one can get all the way around to me. That's right. So if I push you, you don't get to counter, is the thing. So we block, that does not trigger your counter. Hammer Fist would trigger your counter, and you don't have block now. So 
I would do six damage. You would push me. I would take four out of my block. Um, but then I don't have another thing because... Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and push you out of the way. And then... Do I want to... Because I want to get in a position where I can use Head Smash, but it's just not, not happening here. Hammer Fist. Oh, Hammer Fist is two. So I do get that. I get that shot off. Okay. Let's see if they're able to get all the way around there. Oh, no. So front kick will push you, and then I can do a long strike. But if I let's see, about 24. So if I block, and then I quick strike, that will move you. But then my I can do front kick and long strike. So let's block. And then, um, I guess I might as well just kick you because then I don't take anything. So I kick you, and now I can use long strike to do another hit. And that is that. Now this is going to be tricky because it's going to be very hard for me to... Oh, I can shift to here. And because you're facing that way, you are not going to get to um, this. So, well, how much do you have? You have 12 left, so we're going to do a combo finisher on you. Back spin kick for the win. So, you are two away, so I can step, and then I can hammer this. And take a little bit more off of you. And now it's just you. Just you, security. Alright, so I've got lots of movement now, which is funny. So I'm going to grapple you to there, so you don't get the um, counter. Then I'm going to pull you, and then I get another long strike. And we're done! Okay. Yeah. That all was the result of a of getting kidnapped and choosing the fight option instead of the other two things, which were automatically uh, bad for me. But now uh, the prize I get there is my co maximum combo is up by two. So I think it caps at five now instead of three, which means that combo finisher is going to be way more powerful. Um, I am going to go to medical to heal and gain. Oh, I don't have the money. I shouldn't have done that. I should have gone. No, I guess the way other option is a fight. So the only benefit I would get out of that is the the money and the, the prize card. But anyway, I'm happy with how we finished up that fight. Now we're in the pub again, and the, uh, this, this fellow is going to come after me. Let's try to get some head smashes in this time, why don't we? Okay, like that. None of these will push you, unfortunately. Quick strike. Block. Now, now, I actually don't know that I want to throw a punch you because I'm going to move back and let you spin and punch that guy. So I'm just going to shift to behind you. And then I'm going to emergency move over here because I want to see if I can knock people out of this side. So I can be able to do that in turns. Then I spin punch. Oh, I didn't get in your way to make you want to shoot at me. That's fine. So, I can... If I move to here, I can grapple and then quick kick, which pushes. So first, I'm going to step, and then I'm going to grapple, and I'm going to push you over there, and then I'm going to kick you out of the level. And this will do 10 damage, so I'm going to block, and just... Do the action movie thing of blocking. It does the Wonder Woman thing. You see what she did? She just put a, 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 a wrist up. I'm secretly playing Wonder Woman. So, knock you out of level. I wonder if there's, like, there should be a, one of the, 
the, the side objectives in a level should just be defeat all enemies by knocking them out of a level. Beautiful. So, you have this much health. So if I hammer fist and then combo finisher, you are right on. And let's, uh, let's go this way because that makes it more likely that you're going to end up in some place where I can take you out of the, out of the board. Right on with the counter. So you didn't, you couldn't even get all the way to me. Is the thing. So I don't have enough push to take you all the way out. So we're gonna do that. And then okay, well I can move up here and then push you up against the counter for some more damage. And then throw up counter so that you attack and then I pluck you back. You got five left. So let's finish off with a nice front kick. More blood than is probably applicable here, but it's style, so we'll, we'll just allow it. Cool. Ooh, redraw. Discard all cards in hand and then draw the same amount. That seems very um, useful. But also we could get a stun dart at range of 2 to 8. Deal 9 damage, deal 1 stun when the target has no block. Minimum range 2. I think stun dart is too fun to not take. Um, so, what are we leaving here? I'm going to try to do the kitchen to the event to medical. So that's going to be our route here. Ooh, wow, look at how closed in this is. Maybe not the best level for me to have the, to have the dart, unfortunately. But I, I can just push you out of level instantly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good! Why did it spawn that enemy there, right? <laughs> Bye, Felicia! <laughs> exactly. Oh, ah, that's ridiculous in a fun way. Let's see, so I shift. Then I'm gonna slip over here. Now it's going to be harder to get away from you because you've got a range of two, but I can just throat punch you. And so you don't get to act this turn. Uh, if I move back, the stun dart will still be too close because I guess range two, one, two, is that, is that all that it actually needs? My stun dart here? Oh, nine damage. If they were already stunned, they would be very stunned. I'm guessing that stun does not stack the two turns with the stun. Or did it? Maybe it did. Look, because this person is still um, is still stunned. Can I stun lock in this game? Mike, you broke the game by just stun locking all the enemies. Yes, I am an elite fighting game competitor where it's just like and then I'll be doing that thing. That would maybe not as fun, but it would be funny. All right, so if I get to here, I could grapple and then kick this enemy out of the, out of the level, but they only have three health, health left. So honestly, I can just hammer fist and you're done. So let's see, emergency move gets me to here. And then step, I don't think, can get me to there. But it will get me to the point where I can go ahead and do this attack. And they will take extra damage from getting knocked into to that. And I can grapple them over here. And they will turn around, and then if I get a push for anything that pushes, uh, it will be out. So unfortunately, uh, Head Smash doesn't work here because they are against a door instead of a wall. But I can hit strike, and then I can counter. 
going to do seven damage. I have eight counter. You have four health left. Let's get some extra pocket for good measure and take you out. Turns to completion four. We did not reach five combo, however, but we did get some money for um, a quick win. So Jolt increases combo. The combo row is over five, gain three combo. Wow, that's far up. Now, the three punch combo might increase our combo three times because it is actually three attacks. I'm not sure, but I think I like it more than having either of these because I don't have a few. I have some other stuff that keys off of combo, but I would love the attack here, and I'm curious to see whether... Ninjas! This game, my heart, the tropes are very silly, but I love it. You get ready to fight the ninjas. Of course, ninja is already plural because of how Japanese works, but fine. We're on a train! There's ninjas on a train! I'm tired of all these mother effing ninja on these on this mother effing train. Uh, can I knock you up? Okay, so first first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the ninja. Uh heals three does four damage up to three tiles away. But here's the thing. I will pick you off the train and you'll be more than three tiles away. Um Slip to here, and then I can throw punch you. Because uh, I'm not going to have enough combo. So let's do that. And then I throw punch you for some damage. And I don't have enough combo. So if this step card was that, like, increase your combo thing, I could then use the combo finisher. So uh, let's be fair. Uh, now I want to watch Shang Chi again. Absolutely. Duh! These ninja have swords. Bleeding is a negative status effect that can be stacked. It deals damage equal to the current bleeding value of a character at the start of the turn and diminishes by one each turn. So these ninja do bleed, I have to imagine, and they have counter. Deals 10 damage and 2 bleeding on a line of 3 tiles in front of them, so like this, 1, 2, 3, I guess, yeah, like the shotgun. Uh, counter incoming attacks with, within one tile range, deals 8 damage and 1 bleeding. So I really want to knock these enemies out. If I can. So let's find out whether they counter a move. No. I'm gonna knock you out of the train as well. So I would get attacked here. I can long strike. And then he will spawn her next turn. Well, I don't want to be there, unfortunately, because that would get me sorted. So I can long strike you, you can counter me from there, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my emergency move to get here, I guess, uh, and I guess I can long strike again because you don't get to counter from that, from two spaces away. Very good. So having the long strikes here is going to be really handy again. Ninja! Ninja Master. This Ninja Master can teleport to any position in the fight and gives a ranged attack for 12 damage. Okay. So you will counter because I'm right in front of you now. And you're going to attack up a few spaces away. Do you get to attack through the other ring? Does, uh, does he leave the lock behind? Uh... Like, do I, do I unlock the um, shinobi, uh, do I get a shinobi prosthetic if I defeat these enemies? This looks like a ninja master. You know, the, none of these characters actually give pronouns, but... Uh, well, who knows? I've got, I've got the, kind of a top knot thing, but a shaved head. Let's say this person is she. Game isn't telling it is. Uh, telling us, so... She, they. Uh, front kick will do a push, but none of you are... Well, if I push you, you will counter, but it will knock you into you. So, you do how much damage? You do 12 damage. So, and 
the counter, and then I stunned our you. Let's see, this will move me one forward, right? So let's stun our. And then I'm gonna take the a little bit of damage from, from you. But I get a counter. Bam! Yep. And you vanish. Huh, this one. Could have been in range and then it doesn't have to You don't count. Uh, what are my biases? So I don't have a turn thing here, which is handy because I really want to. I probably should just keep on trying to line the ninja up to kick them out of the fight, honestly. You are. Yes, you're in front of a door, but none of my things are move attacks, right? You've got nine health left, so why don't I just go ahead? And... Yep. So I got the combo in before they could counter. It did look like it increased my combo by six, though, right? Or by by three, because we're up to six. Now. You can attack up to your rush attack. So I think I want to shift over to here and then quick switch you. And quick block, down to five combo. Five is still pretty good. And now I can head smash you. It is very handy. So unfortunately that was 17 damage and you have you had 18 health. So I need to use this combo. But then I get to shift to here. And I'm gonna put put you over here, where you get ranged attack. Because I used to be in the line of your attack, but pop, you're fine. Unless Ninja turns around. So, quick attack you, and that pushes you into there, and you're out. But if I push, then I get over there. So I get over here, and then I can get that. I guess I could stun her. I don't get to do the push, but you stay there, which means I can move up on you. Nope. It does not mean that, unfortunately. Uh, long strike. You have six health left. So we're gonna go here. And then long strike you. get two so I can move to here and then grapple you to there and then can I get you off the board so if I shift I can get you to here and then I can grapple you to here and then I guess I can pick you Throat punch you, and then I don't have any momentum left, but you don't get to act. And now, finish this. Ninja! And I get to up get a upgraded card. Swap. Swap places with an adjacent enemy and gain one combo. Delayed gratification. Gain four momentum at the start of your next turn. Okay. That's like, uh, there's a Slay the Spire card that's like this. Uh, or grapple, move any target. Swap here and gain a combo, or move one tiles. I'm going to take swap because I already have a grapple, and being able to just mulligan this to a uh, to be a move one tile, I think is a great idea. So we healed, but now we don't have enough money. We could remove injury, but we don't have one. We don't have enough to increase max health by four. So we're done, and now to the pub. 
where we face the boss once more. Is it going to be Santa? It's Santa again! Alright, and... Here... Okay, so this... This version of the pub is, does not have a door that I can throw something at, unfortunately. Um, but both of these are activated, so if I move this way, they're both going to shoot each other, which is pretty great. And this, these are all walls, so I have plenty of things to do um, to like knock people into a wall. So quick kick, shift. So I can shift to here. And they will shoot each other, but I won't get any other attacks in this stuff. Oh, I guess I can get a long strike in now. And quick lock. And then I'm gonna shift to here and let them shoot each other. Very nice. So you are going to try to attack, which means you're going to hit this on me, and then you are going to shoot. So I can swap places between Jason and me. So I could swap you to here, which means that you would get... So you're going to get punched. You're going to get shot, and you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get big, big struck. So let's... Smash you into the into the bar real quick, and then um, I will go ahead and use my emergency move to get to here because I don't want to get zapped by that big hit. Um, no, I have to throw in a straight line with the stun dart. That's a bummer, but I'm all about not getting um, marked by the big punch. So, if I grapple you and put you here, you're going to get shot. And then I can kick you into the bar again. And push you into the bar. And then just take a quick sidestep to not get shot. St. Nicholas is still upset about all those poly and heretics. Yeah, I, I feel like this character is is absolutely a, her uh, a heretic. Check out how loose that tie is. All right, combo finisher. We've got 33. Can I... I don't know that I can get you all the way over here at this point, unfortunately. I do 16 damage? Yeah, that's more, more damage than I want, honestly. So, let's just... Oh, uh, right. let's do a rollback to see if there's something I can, more useful I can do. This is clearly the, uh, the Agent Eleven, the Pentecostal pugilist. So we can slip over here. be directly in, in your way, because you turned to face me. I forgot about that. Um, what are you doing? You are going to summon reinforcements. I really don't want you to do that. What can I do to make you... How can, what will it take to get you to not summon reinforcements? Can you attack? Uh, oh, you're, you're doing a summon, so I can just get... I can come up on you. Santa summons elves. It'd be very funny if they showed up as elves. Uh, but I can go here and do my long strike and then my hammer fist. You are at 22, which is still more than enough to summon your backup. So I probably will not finish this in five turns, or uh, within three turns. I believe we're already past that. So I just want to survive. Well, I can stun dart you, because you're two spaces away. What if I didn't have to deal with you? 
does Gandalf twist? Uh, I think this biker boss might actually be a fan of another Forge in the Dark game. That looks like the Rebel Crown skin a little bit. Not, not fully, but close. Um, can I show you? I cannot show you into a wall because you are not all the way back on the wall. Uh, how about I put you here so that you can get a shot? Then I will punch you real quick. So you get shot. It's a lot of enemies, but you have five health. So you attack up to two tiles away, so I don't want to be here when you shoot me. And I only have can move one step. So a dangerous thing here. To get out of Santa's way, I have to go to here, which puts me pretty boxed in, and I don't know that I like that. But I can do six damage, which takes you off the board, and then I can move to here, which where I will get shot. And I have block and counter, which I guess is fine, because you can just like the sleeves let you block bullets somehow. Um, so we're going to step here, counter, and block. So we've got 14, and we can pick that, that bullet, and we do uh, bullets and bracelets. Huh. So the, look, this, this uh, pistol enemy moved over to cover um, instead, well I guess because there was a person that really didn't want to just be there. So I can swap, I can put you here where you're going to get attacked, but then you're going to turn and face me. Well, why don't I just throw a punch you, because that makes everything easier. Um, you've got 25. Yeah, I'm going to swap with you so that I can push you just over here. And then, put your combo. And then I'm going to kick you into the wall. So you've got four left. And you're going to hit me for eight. Which, not great, but uh, that turn is pretty fun. And you are going to move over to cover me. So you're going to shoot this enemy. So I can pretend that you are taken care of. Because you basically are. So ship will not let me get up there. But grapple will let me put this enemy I can only shift there because of how these enemies are figured out. You have nine health left, so... Ooh, wow, a hammer fist will just take you all the way out. So let's do that. Because of how, uh, how high the combo is. And being the boss finishes the thing. So, fight complete. And now let's do a replay. We did not finish any turns, I think. Them shooting each other is just silly and wonderful. This game is good, friends. It's very good. Honestly, these scenes look a little bit better if the if your character does take some attacks because otherwise like if you have a flawless victory fight uh, that doesn't necessarily make for as interesting like combat cinema so clearly when I take hits like that it's just um I'm, I'm making dramatic storytelling choices that's definitely it Ooh, so 
I get, I guess maybe there's more than one biome. Um, like, they can do Act 2, Act 3. I did not know that. Uh, cool. Increase maximum and per turn momentum by 2. That's huge. Increase maximum combo by 5. That's pretty great. Uh, increase maximum and per turn momentum by 2. Increase maximum and per turn momentum by 1. I, I don't know why. Like, it gives me. I guess these are probably randomly drawn, but plus 2 energy every turn is huge. Good work, Agent 11. You disrupted a large part of the Death's Head infrastructure. It was nothing. What's next on the agenda? Well, take a look. Okay, so I go here. Do I keep my deck? We need you to go to a undercover. We go undercover in a high security prison. I'm afraid orange isn't my color. Don't worry, we're sending you in as a lawyer. What you do after that is up to you. We need you to get inside and break down their lines of communication. But cops. Oops, I punched that cop out of the window. Shucks, that will make my mission harder. Wait, so I'm going in as a lawyer, but then I'm in a prison trance and instantly start punching people. Okay. Some enemies get more powerful the longer the fight goes on, boosting their damage every turn. Kill them quickly to avoid to prevent getting overwhelmed. Oh no, it's a Saiyan! I'm fighting a Super Saiyan. Uh, so you are Tattoo Guy. A dangerous adversary who can move up to three tiles per turn. Um, are you not the one that gets more powerful? Boost damage can plus one damage modifier every, for every turn alive. Okay. And you are also prisoner, so you that has no block and receive a random injury card, so I really don't want to get hit by this one. Got it. So, slip here puts me at risk of getting kicked out of the world, which I definitely don't want. Um, well, if I had that redraw car card, then I might be able to get to one of my pushes. But that's not, uh, unless that's not what I'm getting. So I can slip to here, but what should I do first? Um, yeah, let's slip to here, and then let's do a combo on this enemy, and that. So you're down to 13, and I don't need to use my emergency move. So both of them got a little stronger. So if I swap with you, then both of you are getting it through. Both of them are attacking. You attack for how much? 11 damage. So... I could use my emergency move and move back to not take this damage. Otherwise, I will be taking it in some way. But look at all this energy I have. So let's do an attack first. You've got four. Okay. So if I use the stun dart, then you won't. Uh, so I can go over here and then shift. And now I'm far enough away to use the stun dart. And this enemy will still attack that enemy and finish the fight. Wow, five momentum is so much. I need to start I need to start drafting cards that are more expensive. You attack the two tiles away. And you don't get stronger every turn, but you do. I was never in that person's attack range. We'll see. No, they didn't. So now you're over here. So... If I slip to here, I can grapple somebody. I can put you here. I have to 
I would have to um, slip, but then I could grapple you and then kick you out. Okay. Um, so, so, oh no, this is, I need the switch one. That's what I was thinking I had. So, I can move you here. And then, if I grapple you over to here, then I can head smush. I'm smushing your head! That's, it's a little different. You attack for 10, and I have 6 block. But, I can just take you out. And then I'm not getting attacked, because you attack for, you attack a range of 1. I'm not going to get the bonus for 3 turns, but that's fine. Oh, I guess it's amount of turns left, so maybe I maybe I can't do this. Here. We've got combo finisher. But you only have one health left, so um, let's push you to take you out, and then I'm gonna slip to here, and I'm gonna quick kick you, and then oh. I can Cool, I can come up with a short range. And that moves me up to where you are, and I block. And it looks like it's just you and me. Can you turn around over there? And so if I shift. So I want to. I want. I, I'd love to be able to knock this enemy out of the, the level, but I don't know if that's going to happen. So I'm going to shift to here. And then I'm going to swap with you so that then I can smush your head. And head smash. Yeah, like, the fact that, I guess that this is, as you're getting onto the transport, that this car is not in motion. And maybe that's why there's these spots here. Cool. And I do get the turn bonus. So quick strike is just 8 damage palm strike. You need three combo. Deal eight damage, gain plus two damage modifier at the start of next turn. Draw X cards, remove all momentum. I guess that you need three things for that? I think Palm Strike is going to be the play here. So sell 4C or Stairway. I have, I've definitely taken some damage. So let's go over to, fel uh, well, I guess this can go either way. So do I want Stairway? Informant. Well, I don't know what informant means, so we're going to go there and find out something new. Hmm. I do see that it is after 4 p.m. I've been having so much fun that I went past my normal streaming time. So we'll do this fight, and then I think I'll wrap up. There is an informant in the enemy gang, marked in yellow. If you can feat, defeat the other enemies without knocking out the informant, there will be a bonus reward for you. Oh, so this is a Shadow of Mordor. Uh, to maintain their secret, the informant will continue to attack you without hesitation. Yeah, we do have blades. I need to, to not uh, use up all the remaining time. Um, so they will continue to attack. The informant will take full damage from all attacks. So I want to get rid of these others to leave the informant um, so that I can get info from them. So we've got shift, dash, swap, long strike. So swap will put you here. And you attack up to two tiles away. Swap. So then... Hit you. And then... I'm going to shift there. I don't get to use Stun Dart this turn. Because I need to do some wacky moving. I guess... I would, if I use my emergency move, I could move one, and then move two, and then Stun Darts. Definitely in this fight. Yeah, get get her. You've got 28, you've got three health left. So hammer fist. And then yeah, nobody's again up against anything, so this combo. I guess combo finisher. Yeah, 
I can't head smash anybody, so I'm not gonna be able to use combo finisher. Um, you do 10 damage, so I definitely don't want that. So if I go over here, and then head smash cannot, so I just quick block. Palm strike takes three momentum, and I have two. So get that. And then, yeah, I guess I'm gonna give myself that damage bonus next turn. And a step, can I get out of the way? No, you do 12 damage. So you do 10 damage. So let's block. And then I'm actually gonna throw a punch to the foreman to make it make them not attack me because. Uh, they, if they survive the fight, that's then that's fine. Um, so this is fine. You're gonna attack me for ten, but I have to block so I don't get an injury. But I do need to get out of this um, this corner here. I can shift to uh, and shift behind, which is good because then I can put this enemy in the middle and they're gonna get attacked by both. So I switch uh, slip by you, and then. I guess if I kick you, whoosh, uh, so that does two, and then they're both going to get attacked. I don't have the move to get over here to attack this one. But this one, uh, oh, okay, now we got a, uh, right, uh, armored prison, okay. I would still fight the armored cop, it's fine, you don't have to, you don't have to be, uh, courteous to the I'm gonna attack. Can auto attack. Well, here's the thing. I can move you to here. And then you get auto hit. That's great. And then I do this. And I'm gonna swap places with you. Um, oh, okay. You're still gonna attack me. Well. We're gonna we're making it look good, everybody. Um you have eight block. Well, I can push you, and you're not in range. And then I can do a combo finisher, which does 26. Counter, but then I throw a punch and they're out. And the informant's not gonna be happy with me because I, I rough them up a bit. Follow-up strike, deal 22 damage to stunned enemies. Well, I do have two attacks that stun now, right? Change tack, move up to two tiles, but I need four combo. But it, it only, yeah, only if they're stunned is tricky. So I'm gonna go for the redraw instead. Um, so I have to take the medical. Pretty expensive for eight healing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Oh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do this fight. I just got too excited. Uh, get the best out. So I should be able to resume my run. Uh, and that is that. So I'm just gonna switch my thing real quick to heads up. That has been fights in tight spaces. It's amazing. I really like it. I will have to see if I can like have a second game running to like play more on the side or install it on a different computer or something uh, because that game is totally cool and I'm going to play the crap out of it. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who came by. Um, so I'm going to go back down. Uh, thanks to Sad Tired Clown, Kids Are Asleep, um, Arvin Eleron, uh, S.J. Magner, thanks to John Harper for coming by. Um, and is that everybody? Yeah, uh, this was a fantastic stream. I had a great time. Uh, thanks for being wonderful company and joking and chatting with me as I figure this game out. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're still here, um, this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, a.k.a. 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern U.S. Time, over at twitch.tv slash Arvin Eleron, um, 
Okay, I need I need a different command that points people to Arv's uh, channel. So I'm just going to type this in. At twitch.tv slash Arvin Elrond, uh, we are continuing the case of the Cindered Seal, which is a really fun and totally wild actual play of Blades in the Dark by John Harper, a.k.a. the John Harper who's been here hanging out, um, which is very fun. We use a custom Fugitives play sheet created by Brandon O'Brien, who is the GM for the game. And from, from the last session and from chatting, I think we might be close to ending the Cindered Seal part of this game. And so this might, tonight could theoretically be a stealth finale. I don't know that we're going to finish in one night, um, but things are definitely heating up and you should check it out. If you don't catch it live, you can find it at youtube.com slash Arvin which is the same address as the Twitch thing here. And all of our audio episodes, or all of the episodes of Synod Seal get turned into audio, which you can find at speculatesf.com or um, subscribe to Speculate SF on your podcast um, app of choice. How are we on followers? 50 followers! So uh, uh, we are going to do a giveaway and... I'm going to figure out whether I can like randomly draw from the 50 followers by looking at my Twitch thing. If not, then I will announce way ahead of time when the um when the draw when the the drawing is going to be so that people can be in the chat and enter the uh, the giveaway to get the chance to win a signed and personalized copy of Annihilation Aria as well as a audiobook copy of Annihilation Aria. And the audio is read by Chris Andrew Siula and Caitlin Kelly. They do a great job. I think it's a wonderful way to experience the book, especially if you've already enjoyed it. And if you like audio, you can just uh, read it that way. So uh, thanks again, everybody. And uh, we'll see you tonight or next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.